a jungle lord, there are few things more irritating than getting an arrow right through your classified section. A poisoned arrow. With the note attached. This is your last warning. Last warning? George never got first warning. Disregard previous arrow. This is your first warning. More like it. Get off my property. Kindest regards, Jerry Manda. Who Jerry Mander? Glad you asked. Glad you asked. That's me, folks. Is Jerry Mander, subdivider and general contractor. My card. <laughs> Gonna carve a civilization in the wilderness. Bowling alley, pizza parlor, the whole schmear. Gonna call it City City. George, not understand. That's why I brought my lawyer. Explain it to him, Manny. Magalumba nakanumba kukamanga tiyawana tohonga. What that mean? Well, cutting through the legal jargon, George, it means we're evicted, thrown out. Not possible. Oh, yes, possible. You see, it says so right here in the writ of Mandibus habeas corpus, Sir Urari and Rosie O'Grady. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try to read the fine print. You'll ruin that keen jungle eyesight. George, I'm afraid we have been ipsoed and factoed. Now hurry, folks, you've got till sundown to clear out. <laughs> Gosh, how time flies when you're having fun. Okay, bulldozers, you're on. George, look, a whole fleet of bulldozers. Well, there goes the neighborhood. George, stop, bulldozer, or no reason why. That pretty good reason. Soon much of the fertile and Gwee Valley was cleared of its dense foliage. And in its place, houses began springing up like mushrooms. Now, if I could only get them to start springing up like houses. <laughs> A little joke there. But mighty George wasn't going to take this lying down. You're going to drive the interloper from our valley? Drive nothing. George, make him walk. Good for you, George. <laughs> I do hope his splints hold. Now, let me get this straight, Georgie. You're challenging me, Jerry Mander, to a duel. Right. And I get to choose the weapons? Right. OK. I choose shovels at 10 paces. Shovels? Pretty silly duel, but OK. George, get shovel and, hey, what's up? You are, Georgie boy. Put George down. Well, if you insist. Okay, let's roll those cement tracks. Roll them, roll them, roll them. George, the freeway's going right past our house. Going fast, it's going through. That does it. George, put foot down. A few minutes later, George was swinging on his way to try again to bring peace and harmony to Mbwibwi Valley. Suddenly, he made a shocking discovery. Number 38, Crosstown Vine missing. I took it down. It interfered with the TV reception. You really asking for trouble, fella. Okay. Uh -oh. What's that? George, call for rhinoceros herd. Come trample whole building development to ground. Surely you jest. There's not a rhinoceros within 50 miles. Make no never mind. Rhino's got keen sense of hearing. <laughs> a terrible sense of direction. As a last resort, the intrepid ape man dropped in on the Bombashuti witch doctor. Yes, yes, my good man. What is it? What is it? Witch doctor voice sounds funny. Well, you got kind of an adenoid problem yourself, booby. What's it gonna be? Need spell to make evil builder Jerry Manda go away. No problem at all. First, let me scatter these feathers to the winds. Part of secret ritual, huh? What secret ritual? I was plucking a chicken when you arrived. Now, here you are. Just take this juju box of the powerful spirit, Tiniti. Tiniti? Yeah, his name is right on the side. Oh, sure. Tiniti. Now, just close your little eyes. Lie down here. There. All comfy? Ropes a little tight, doctor. Not for long. Now, just say whatever comes into your mind. Uh, nothing there, eh? Well, don't worry, there's lots of time. And the couch holding George and the TNT rose into the air and disappeared from sight. Well, that's that. 
Thanks for the use of your office, Doc. <laughs> You're so right. Now to cut the ribbon on the TT City Supermarket. But at that moment, George and the TNT dropped into the deep waters back of nearby Mbwee Dam. A moment later, the couch bobbed to the surface. Uh-oh. George dropped the neaty juju box. The explosion blew apart the dam, causing the entire housing development to be washed away in the flood. When the neaty make juju, he make juju. And so, the threat of civilization, a thing of the past, George returned to his carefree, if slightly soggy, way of life. What's that on the end of your line, George? Evil builder, gerrymander. You're fishing for gerrymander? Not fishing for him. Use him for bait. Ow! Ooh, ooh! Watch the teeth, fella! Watch the teeth! Ooh, 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 ooh! When you find yourself in danger, when you're threatened by a stranger, when it looks like you will take a licking, <laughs> there is someone waiting who will hurry up and rescue you. Just call for Super Chicken. But if you're afraid, you'll have to overlook it. Besides, you knew the job was dangerous when you took it. He will drink his super sauce and throw the bad guys for a loss, and he will bring them in alive and kicking. <laughs> there is one thing you should learn when there is no one else to turn to. Call for Super Chicken. Call for Super Chicken. On board this train, a hardened criminal is being taken to prison. He is Dr. Gizmo, the world's trickiest crook. But tricks or no tricks, you won't get away this time, right? Wrong. Wrong? Yes, because this is a recording, recording, recording. It was then the police officer realized that he was handcuffed to a dummy made up to look exactly like Dr. Gizmo. I've been sitting here talking to a dummy. Me too. Me too. Me too. <laughs> Meanwhile, the real Dr. Gizmo had made his way to the back of the train. Activating his famous helicopter hat, he made a clean getaway. Once free, he quickly returned to a life of crime. Stick him up! Boy, are you a lousy robber. Why? You forgot the gun. You can't shoot me with your index finger. Oh, no? You Lifting his victim's wallet with his scissor extension wallet grabber, Gizmo fired his jet roller skates and sped away. Help! Help! Fortunately, Henry Cabot Hanhouse III and his friend Fred Help! were nearby. Help! Uh-oh. Sounds like Dr. Gizmo is on the loose again. This looks like a job for Super Chicken. Ducking into an alley, Henry quickly changed into the funny suit while Fred mixed the super sauce. Here, Mr. Hanhouse, eat your super sauce. Eat it? It's a little thick. Too much cornstarch. Oh, well. The super sauce went to work. The super sauce went to work. Are you through? I think so, yes. The super sauce went to work and quickly transformed the starch-filled Henry into a muscle-filled super chicken. To the super coop, Fred. Roger Wilcox. And the powerful pullet took to the air to capture Dr. Gizmo. Super chicken, eh? Well, I've got a gizmo that'll take care of that dumb cluck. A short time later, as the super coop cruised over the city... Aha! My supervision has spotted something, Fred. You mean that sign that says, Dr. Gizmo's hideout? Yes, that's it. Hey, I can see it. I must have supervision, too. If you had any supervision, you wouldn't put so much cornstarch in the sauce. Hang on, Fred. We'll land on the roof and take him by surprise. Boy, is he dumb to put a sign on his hideout. Poor devil doesn't have a super brain like I do, Fred. But as Super Chicken was just about to land... <laughs> but by one of Dr. Gizmo's tricks, our heroes fell 300 feet to the street below. What was that you were saying about your super brain? No time to explain now, Fred. Give me a hand. Nailing the coop back together, our heroes took off to give chase once again. There he goes, into that vacant lot. I'll power dive and cut him off. Ha ha, now to give that very brain a taste of my instant brick building. Hey. Where did that brick building come from? What brick building? Funny, it used to be a brick building. Ha ha, I stopped Super Chicken dead in his tracks. Not quite. 
You're under arrest, Gizmo. Super chicken! I'd like to see you get me with one of your tricks again. Okay, look. What? Hey, he did it. Pulling a unicycle from under his coat, Dr. Gizmo sped away. Don't worry, Fred. I'll catch up to him with my super legs. What about me? I'll have to carry you. Piggyback? No, chickyback. Oh. And the mighty bird was off. The chase lasted for three days. Curtis, won't that fool fowl ever give up? But Super Chicken never gives up. Let's give up, Super Chicken. Never. Hey, you're right. At last, finding himself cornered <coughs> and down to his final trick, Dr. Gizmo had no choice but to turn and face the mighty bird. Come any closer, and I'll blow up Freddy Boy. Uh-oh. He's bluffing, Fred. What if he isn't? You let me worry about that. Well, as long as somebody worries. The fearless chicken pointed his lightning bolt ray at Dr. Gizmo. Drop that detonator or I'll let you have it. I wanted you, super chicken. So long, everybody. They both fired at the same time. And, of course, Fred was blown up. But the lightning bolt also went true. Oh, I am Certainly a lucky lion. How's that, Fred? That's the first time you ever hit anything besides me. Yay! An hour later, Dr. Gizmo was back on the train, heading for prison. Yes, Fred. He could trick me, but he couldn't trick my super brain. Oh, that's what you think, super chicken. What do you mean? I mean, this is a recording. Recording. He tricked us. That's another dummy of Dr. Gizmo. But he's not the only dummy in the world, Fred. This is also a recording, recording, recording. A dummy super chicken? Right, Fred. Us real guys are back in the baggage car, and he's still going to prison. Oh, I wish I had a super brain. Even the standard model would be nice. The mighty fowl had done it again. So when you hear that cry in the sky, <laughs> you'll know it. Don't ask me. Super chicken still on the train. Tom Slick, Tom Slick, let me tell you why he's the best of all good guys. Tom Slick, Tom Slick, in the Thunderbolt we slap her once he's on your tail. He won't quit because you know there's no such word as fail. Welcome to the Great Dismal Swamp and the Ira K. Dismal Swamp Buggy Race. It is a typical racing day in the swamp, wet, cold, and miserable. And speaking of miserable, here is that black-hearted villain, dirty cheat, and habitual nail-biter, Baron Automatic. Boo! Hold the mere still clasher. Baron, you shave off your mustache. Nobody will know you're the bad guy. Except me. It's my foolproof plan to beat Tom Slick. How's that? Tom Slick is such a gentleman. He could never win a race from a lady, right? Right. But you're not a... Oh, yes, you are, too. Wait for old Gertie, Tom boy. I've got some water in my shoe. Say, who's the attractive thing in the way out racing togs? Attractive? No, thing, yes. Well, I declare to Gunny, it's my hero, Tom Slick. Oh, you are even handsomer than your pitcher. Yes, that's because little pitchers have big ears. <laughs> oh, tee hee 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 hee. Mr. Slick, you are a rogue, sir. A rogue. Call me Tom, Miss, uh... Boondaka. Wilma May Boondaka. Wilma May? Boondaka? Are you in today's race, Miss Boondaka? You bet your goony bird, Buster. That I mean, yes, indeed, you do, Tommykins. Tommykins! Racers, man your bugs. And the swamp buggy racers dash to their strange looking craft. The starter raises his pistol. And uh, there they go. It's a dirty business, swamp racing. Taking the lead is Billy Joe Halfacre in the six stud mud mauler. Followed by Wally George Bama standing in the doorway of his gangle chain cool blower. 
And here comes Tom Slick. Yay? After you, Miss Boondocker. Oh, thank you, Yankee. You all real gentlemen, Tommy Keen. And uh, courteous Tom Slick gives up third place to Wilma May Boondocker. It's sicky time. Dare to clutch her. You have your disguise on? Just a barrel, mighty one. There. Good. Get to work. Yes, master. Billy Joe Halfbaker still holds the lead. But wait. Ahead of him in the water, one of the most dangerous hazards in swamp buggy racing. An alligator holding a cross-cut saw. Uh-oh. Halfbaker has just been subdivided. And wouldn't you know, I got the slow half. Good work, Clutcher. Thanks, Sir Mighty Baron. Gertie, you just ran over an alligator that said, ooh. Did you expect him to whistle, Dixie? There's something funny going on here. Hopefully. Wally George takes the lead, followed by Wilma May Boondocker and the infatuated Tom Slick. Infatuated, you mean? But what is this? There is a large alligator in a tree above the race course, and he's holding a stick of dynamite. Light the fuse and drop it, Clutcher. Yes, Maddie Baron. Darn. The matches are wet, Master. Use your cigar, numbskull. Oh, sure. Throw it, throw it. Now, who in the blue-eyed world to throw a cigar at old Wally George? How's that, Master? I... That wasn't so good. By Tophet, a flying alligator. It's a swamp spirit. And the terrified Wally George changes course. Always a dangerous move in swamp racing. As you can see. The race is now a battle between Wilma May Boondocker and Tom Slick. Hand me that fishing pole, Marigold. I'm going to try a new angle. Wilma May streaks for the finish line. I, I'm afraid I'll have to challenge you for the lead, little Missy. Oh, dearie me. I dropped it, my lace hanky poo poo. Well, that tears it. No gentleman can refuse to pick up a lady's lace hanky poo poo. Oh, fie, fie. Tom is turning back. Oh. I've got it, Miss Boondocker. You mean you had it, you nitwit. Now. Good heavens, Miss Boondocker, you you flipped your wig. That's not a girl, Tom. That's Baron Automatic. The Baron? You mean I've been flim-flammed? By a pretty flimsy kind of flam, too. That makes my sporting blood boil. I'll bet this hanky poo, -poo isn't even real lace. Look out, Baron. Here I come. Yay! Yay. The mighty Thunderbolt Grease Slapper is barely touching the surface of the water. The friction is actually turning that muddy water to steam. That steam drive should make the difference between defeat and victory. In the mud field stretch, it's Tom. It's the Baron. It's Tom. The Baron. And the winner is... Uh... No. Wait, I'll clean him up a little. It's Tom Slick. Yay! I guess the Baron won't need this anymore. Baron to Clutcher, where are you? Is that you, my Baron? Yes. How can I be sure? <laughs> I'm sure. Clutcher, you miserable failure. You couldn't fool anybody in that alligator suit. Oh, yes, I could, Master. I fooled him. <laughs>